you and this man shared the same uh, landscape in real estate on Sunday. He was with his caddy and millions of people watching at home. You were wandering all by yourself, lost in a crowd, lost from your crowd, meandering around like a Neanderthal. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now, primetime golfer legendary human meme on the internet and i believe he came in second at the masters ladies Ooh. and gentlemen will zalik yeah! yeah! well how are you buddy oh my god i love it thanks guys i'm a massive fan hey will we're a big fan of yours too you don't have to lie to us to begin this conversation <laughs> but i do appreciate you saying that will i want to let you know that learning about you this weekend was fantastic how i learned about you exactly was via a nick moraldo tweet okay so nick moraldo tweeted out obviously picture of you and you know, Happy's caddy, okay? And he said, cool, it went viral. But what had happened was immediately upon it going viral is the golf community was like, oh, real original joke. <laughs> so I guess this has been something that's been around for a long time. Your golf career, I think you just got introduced to a lot of people this weekend, whether it was meme or by your incredible play. How did we get here? And why did I not know who the hell you were, Will? You're electric out there. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Yeah, the uh, Happy Gilmore caddy, uh, reference, I guess, has been going on since I was like 17. And I thought it was funny because I had long hair back then. And then I cut it really short for a few years. And then I was like, you know what the hell with it? We got COVID. I'm not going to get a haircut. I'll, I'll let it grow out. And then all of a sudden, I went a tournament and finished well in the open. And all of a sudden, all of the references are coming back. And then, you know, having Adam Sandler tweet at me, it was oh. like, what the hell just happened the last two years? It's <laughs> legendary, dude. Hey, what, what's it like now? So I was out there. I got to follow you on Sunday for a long time, which I don't know if you could feel it, but the crowd was like growing as every you obviously you came out of the gates hot with two birdies and I, I'm sitting there in the crowd. I think I was on three and everyone's talking about you coming up to the tee and they're all running. Like, could you feel like all of that momentum gaining that you kind of took with you from the start? Yeah, no, I mean, I just it was really cool just because it's like all these guys were, you know, making Happy Gilmore references, uh, Owen Wilson references, you know, guys <laughs> rude me on in between shots. Um, but it was that it was like that all day. So it was just fun to feed off of it. I could tell as the underdog and a lot of people were rooting for me. And I, I, I wish I could have slowed the day down a little bit, but I also found out that I now have like 47 different variations of my last name too. So that was kind of fun to Did I say too. it right? Did I say it right? Oh, no, you got it right. No, it was just funny hearing, like, hey, there's that Zalatteris kid or whatever. Like, <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm, I was like, man, I've been a rookie, for, like, for 10 events now. It's like, at least maybe get that one right. Well, I, I did you – now I just learned that you're a rookie, by the way. I, I By the way, this is – I knew your name, though. Hey, fucking knew your name. <laughs> okay, so get off my ass, golf community or whatever. The Did you wonder how you would potentially perform at that set? Like, going into golf – yeah, everybody knows it's a massive head game. Like, hey, this is yeah. in between the ears. A lot of people can hit millions and millions of people every single day try to hit golf balls. And then there's only people that make money off of this thing. Did you have that wonder of like, okay, Master Sunday, crowd around me, in contention. Did you ever wonder to yourself, how will I perform in that situation? Or is it just another day in the on the golf course for you? Yeah, I, I mean, it was... Uh... I thought Saturday actually kind of set me up for Sunday because it's like I hadn't been in a final group on the PGA Tour yet, but I had contended in a couple of events. Um, and Saturday was kind of the day where it was like, you know, it's I it meant a little bit more to me than it probably did for a couple other people just because I want to see how I handled it. And I was standing on the first tee and I looked at my caddy and I was like, I'm not trying to put down the masters here but it's like i thought i'd be more nervous oh <laughs> yeah like i and i i don't know if it was just like the preparation meets opportunity type thing but i knew that i was like man we're gonna be in for some fun this weekend and then you know sunday being four back going in the last round it was like you know weapons free boys i mean we're firing at everything let's go let's <laughs> go after this and birding one and two that that was to me kind of like the okay yeah we need to uh we're, we're in this thing and i i think i was like five or six back going into amen corner and i needed to birdie 13 at least to give myself a chance and then i didn't realize uh hideki had knocked in the water on 15 which then 
I heard the groans, but I didn't think that it was him just because I saw I was walking up 17, which is right next to it. And uh, I was like, you know what? Let, you know, let's do our best here. Just birdie, birdie, finish. Anything yeah. can happen. You've been watching this tournament forever, and you see those guys with the leaderboards where they have like the 15 minute intervals of like 4.15, there's five shot lead, 4.30, it's like two shots. And then five o'clock, there's like four guys tied for the lead. And you're like, what the hell just happened? And so I just, it was like, let's just see what happens. Hey, yeah. Obviously, it only ended up being one shot. Yeah, Sunday's at the Master. Let's just go birdie birdie here to end this thing. <laughs> yeah, fine. Yeah, who knows? Easy. Who knows Sorry about that, AJ. What do you got? Hey, what was it like Saturday night trying to go to bed, trying to sleep? Like, were you renting a house close by? Who did you have in town with you? And what was that also waiting around to be in one of the last groups? That has to be kind of a weird feeling, I would imagine. Yeah, I, so Saturday night, I was actually, because we had the rain delay, I was eating dinner at like 10.15. Oh. So, because I didn't get back till about 9.30. And so it was actually kind of a blessing at the same time because I didn't get to bed till like 12.31 but it made me kind of sleep in a little bit to like 10 and kind of the mistake that I made on Saturday was I was up at seven, seven thirty, and, you know, I'm like waiting around, you know, I'm like, all right, you know, I've already done, you know, it's like, give me that newspaper. I'll do a crossword puzzle. I'm like, what, 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 what am I doing? <laughs> and so I like, I, Saturday was kind of more of a nerve wracking morning than Sunday. Cause Sunday I, I just, I honestly, I've wanted to be in that position my entire life. And I was like, you know, we've made it this far. You know, you handled yesterday pretty damn well. So, you know, whatever, you can go out and shoot 78 today and you're going to do whatever other 24 year olds going to do. So, you know, we go, go out and, you know, like I said, it's kind of the, what my caddy and I joked about was weapons free boys. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. The, 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 you're 24. I just learned that as well. Probably should have known that. See, there's a couple things <laughs> I probably should have known going into this. The other thing I learned in your answer there was you do, you eat dinner at 10 15. I, I thought, <laughs> I thought dinner that late causes, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like it, I, that's kind of what happens to me. I start oh, yeah. eating later. Mm -hmm. I wake up the next morning. I'm 260. I'm 265. I'm 270. <laughs> you might be one of the most fit humans I've ever seen in my entire life. Are you on a strict diet? Do you, how do you, how do you manage that? It is very impressive to, to see you kind of your, I don't say your body of work, but literally your body of work. It is, you may be the most fit human I've ever seen in my entire life. Well, I had after, uh, a few beverages on Sunday. I needed oh, something to, uh, beers. you know, kind of soak it up the next morning with uh, the family. So I had cookout and then I had pizza. So this son of a bitch. Uh, <laughs> uh, you're eating pizza uh, too, huh? Have you always been like that? Because you have you always uh, always golf, other sports? How'd you kind of get into it? Uh, baseball, basketball, and golf. Um, I loved pitching. I pitched until I got to high school, and the only thing I could hit was low and away, which. What do you, I mean, it's where a golf ball is. So I was like, you know what the hell is this? I mean, I love pitching, but um, I think that's honestly where I got all the speed from. I mean, even though I'm, you know, pretty wiry and slim, I mean, I'm still top 20 in distance off the tee for the PGA Tour. So wow. hell yeah. it's just like, I mean, there's, trust me, I'm not like Bryson where he's like, kind of babying it out there 330. And then all of a sudden you see him go Hulk smash and it's like 380. It's like my 330 is like, Every single pound of me is going after it. <laughs> I need you to start bringing out like the three wood on the tee box. Have people start to boo it, put it back in there, pull out the driver. <laughs> That's what DeChambeau's doing now. Whenever you say weapons free boys, that just, do you have different strategies for courses? Because I, I, as I was, I go and I go in stages with golf. You know, I'll play a lot. I feel like I'll get good at golf. I'll start making smarter plays. I'll lay up here. I'll do this. I'll start playing the course for what it is. And then there's times where I'm golfing like once every three months. I'm going out there. I'm hitting the ball as far as I can every fucking time. And let's go ahead and have a good time here. It, whenever you talk about weapons free, is it like you're just you're using a different strategy to the course? And what course have you found is good for the way you play? Yeah, I think... Um... Like kind of the whole, it was more of like an attitude. Cause the thing about Augusta is it's like, there's some whole, it's very, it kind of goes in waves. Like the second and third hole are pretty easy holes. You can make some birdies. Then four through six is pretty hard. And then seven, eight, nine, you make some birdies. Then 10, 11 are hard. Then 12 through 16, you've got birdies. And then 17, 18 is a tough finish. So it's a lot of like up and down. I think that's why guys love watching it. Um, but I think, you know, 
it was more of a little bit more of a mindset the last day, but there were a few pins that I probably wouldn't have really fired at on any other day, but I was five or six back and it's like, Hey, you got to take this chance. Like if you're going to go ahead and hit this thing to 30 feet, like par, par's not going to help you here. Like we need some birdies, but I think, I think places like that, I think that's why I played well, like in the major so far, it's just because the courses are so much harder and ball striking has always been my forte. So you know, it's like the U.S. Open. I mean, it's like 7,700 yards, six inch rough. Greens run at like 13. It's like that's perfect for me. Like I hit it farther than a lot of guys, and whenever I hit fairways, I typically hit it closer. So it's like that's kind of <laughs> is this golf? Are we, <laughs> are we <laughs> golfing? More, is more this, up my alley. Yeah, is this golf or not, man? Yeah. We're getting yeah, further and but, closer. Is that what a line? <laughs> Pat, I gotta say, you do have a good move at it. So just keep on shipping Ooh. that thing. Oh, you've yeah. seen you've seen the move. Is that what it's oh, called? Yeah. You've seen the play? Oh yeah, I've seen it. I tried to you know, I tried to putt like Bryson with the arm. I can't fucking putt, Will. I don't know how you guys do it. I have no idea how you do it. If I could figure out the flat stick, I think I could enjoy golf a lot more. You know what I mean? If well, I Darren Williams is a buddy of mine and he played I think in that charity event that you did or the two teams or whatever yeah 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 and I was like I told him I I'm not trying to fangirl you here but I was like I was like yeah I've listened to Pat all the time and he's like he's like yeah he's a cool guy but he doesn't wear shoes yeah yeah <laughs> by the way that has changed I'm trying to respect yeah. the game uh -huh. a little bit more that's because right I've learned allegedly now I I have not out of my own personal research, seen much <laughs> advancement in my play. Allegedly, the grip matters on the ground. So I'm, I was going to like try to be good at golf again because I was at one point, and they told me, well, if you're bare feet, you're really you're you're starting yourself way behind if you do that. I put shoes on, I fucking stunk. Lost eleven hole, uh, eleven balls in eight holes. Will <laughs> eleven balls, eight holes can't do it. What do you got, Connor? Yeah, Willie, I read that you forewent your senior year at Wake Forest. Uh, did you know, like, while you were in college, like, holy shit, I'm gonna, you know, probably finish second in the Masters in 2021 and become a millionaire, <laughs> or is this like whole thing kind of like a holy shit, look what I'm doing? Yeah, it's more of the holy shit, look what I'm doing. Yes, yeah. the my first year as a pro, I did a bunch of Monday qualifiers and missed all of them, then missed Q school, and then basically I Monday qualified my way in in 2019 to the Corn Ferry Tour, and then last year I, I just missed my card literally by a shot. Mm. in 2019 i needed to make i missed two out or two out of the last three cuts but then had a really good finish in evansville and i missed the corn fairy or missed our promotion i guess off of basically one shot if i make one of those weekends um i end up you know i'll just have a decent weekend i would have gotten my card so i'm kind of stewing for like three months um you know the fact that all it took was just one shot and then 2020 hits with COVID. And now I've got a four month layoff. And so it's like, dude, I've played three events in the last seven months and it literally came down to one shot. And that's the difference. And I think that kind of just fired me up, but it, I, I left early cause I had a bunch of starts. Um, and, uh, I honestly didn't do anything with them, but it was still really good experience and, you know, stuff that I rely on to this day. Hey, how stupid is it that you technically don't have your, your PGA Tour card right now? And what? They changed the rules? What does that even mean? I watched the big well, break. You hit it through some <laughs> house, you get a Q card, you can do the whole thing. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird spot to be in, but, you know, like, but it's not like they're going to change the rule, like, midseason. Like, it is what it is. Like, I have to win to technically be a member right now and to get into the FedEx Cup playoffs. So, let's go. Yeah, but put it this way, it's like, you know, I'm in the top 30 in the world, but but how many times has a guy come from the Corn Ferry Tour and been top 30 in the world? Like, the reality is a lot of those guys like Colin Morikawa, Victor Hovland, all those guys, they've won in their first year. And so this situation has never come up. So that's why it's just kind of like, you know, every week it, it kind of frees me up where it's like I'm locked up for next year. I'm in all the majors until, you know, through, I guess, the Masters of next year, like, Finishing second the next 20 weeks in a row means the same thing as finishing 20th. You know, make a hell of a lot more money, but, <laughs> you know, it's like I need to, I need that win. I'm thinking of you, and, I mean, aside from the very low-hanging fruit here of the Internet, 
You, Happy Gilmore hopping in a car, driving to these tournaments, putting the big checks oh, in the checks back, in and the then back. just driving <laughs> to the next one. The guy, not even supposed to be here, just collecting his checks, <laughs> please, and then try to take him to a big bank where I can get, uh, you know, the big mount. So what do we got, Diggs? Well, so I'm looking at you. Finished 15th, 22nd, 10th, 21st, and second. So pretty, pretty solid. So your name on your name on the tour now. Is there a, a older player? or older players who have taken you in and given you some advice. And do older players or any players, if they miss the cut on Friday at Augusta, stick around for the weekend besides DJ because he has to hand out the jacket? <laughs> um, I know a lot of past champions hit balls on the weekend. Um, Mike Weir and Bernard Langer were hitting balls on the weekend. Langer? Um, My guy yeah. Langer? Hey, Jay's I played with him Thursday, Friday, and <laughs> I mean – I, I was messing with him a little bit because I just absolutely laced one on eight <laughs> and just straight down when there was like 325 to cover the right marker and I carried it. Woo. And I was like, I was feeling pretty good about myself. And Langer hits three wood to lay up short of the bunker. So I'm spotting him like 120 yards. And I like hit five iron up there and I put it in a bad spot, have a tough up and down, end up making par. Langer goes three wood, three wood, eight iron to a foot and makes birdie. And I walk up on the tee. I'm like, I just spotted you 120 effing yards and you still got me. <laughs> yeah, that's like, all. The, the guy's 60 plus years old and the guy can still play. Hey, but, Ge Gary, player. Gary, player. The, hey Gary Player. Gary Player. Hey, Gary Player. I mean, he absolutely smoked that thing. Do yeah. you guys, do you oh, all yeah. go to that? Is that? Was everybody that plays in a tournament sitting there at that thing? Well, so my tee time was like, too close to go watch because it would have screwed up my warm up. Oh. But I saw them <clears throat> warming up on the range, and they're like going through a full blown warm up. I mean, these guys are in their 80s and they're talking about what they're working on. And you know, the story goes that this week that Gary said that he shot 78 a couple weeks ago, and he said it was really frustrated because he's like, "Man, I think I might have I, sh I played my last Masters too soon. Like, I still think there's something in there." And I'm like, <laughs> that's incredible. Hey, that's golf though. Golf, you oh, can yeah. be a 55, 60 year old champion. That is, with your style of golf, you said you're a long ball hitter and everything like that. Do you, like, are you already planning for a potential 30 year career? Cause that is something, you're 24, you're young as hell. Is that something that even crosses your mind or is it just like, well, let's get a card to be on the tour first before we <laughs> even think about that. But that is real thing about golf. Like I have thought to myself, I could probably do two more careers, retire from them and still potentially have enough time to get on that senior tour and win some golf. You can be 60 years old and still win a goddamn tournament on the weekends. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at Romo. I mean, Romo's 40 and he's still, I mean, I play a lot of golf with him at home, but I mean, that guy treats it like an out, all out job. <laughs> and he, he, I mean, he has no reason to either. I mean, it's like the guy's obviously has a nice little contract and had a nice little career. And 17. He's had a pretty rough back, and look at him go. I mean, he's out there 10 hours a day. Ty, what do you have? Will, in terms of the money, uh, when you're out there, like, is it tough not to consciously think about that stuff? Like, I mean, I know Shoffley on Sunday lost, like, 660,000 bucks by dumping it into the water. Jeez. Like, are you thinking that when you're out there? Like, oh shit, I just lost like 500K. <laughs> well, the Corn Ferry Tour, I think. No, yeah, I mean, yeah. That, that's actually a good point with the Corn Ferry Tour. It's like a year ago, I was thinking, you know, if I made like a $40,000 check on the Corn Ferry Tour, I'm like, sweet, I got two, you know, two years of rent out of this. This is great. <laughs> and, you know, things have changed a little bit, but I'd say. No, I mean, I don't play. That's the thing that's kind of funny is like, it's not our money yet you know it, it's like it's not like it's points this past yeah it's not like this past week you know it's like i had whatever i made last week and all of a sudden if i made a couple bogeys you're taking away that you know like in xander's case six hundred thousand dollars like it if you're out there playing for the money you know it makes it a lot harder especially playing the last few holes but it's like you know i love kiz's line because it's so brutally honest but it's so funny where Kiz was saying that, like, look, man, there's just some courses that I just can't contend on. And they asked, well, well then why do you show up? He said, because they pay a lot of money for 20th. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, Kiz, Kiz that was has just a good such time. a brutal, yeah, such good line. Hey, we saw Kiz have a very good time one night. He's hilarious individual, obviously. Um, I love that guy. Hey, he is. I mean, I think I would too from watching. From <laughs> yeah. a, the, he put on a show. <laughs> he did. He put on Him a and his boys. Oh my god, <laughs> they were awesome. Um, anybody been a, a douche to you? 
No, but I think it's been funny that I've gotten like 75 Venmo requests for like, hey, thanks for blowing the Masters or stuff like that. It's like a hundred dollar request. I'm like, right. I was talking about PGA guys, but I, the internet's going to do that. The internet, oh, the yeah. internet's going to so do that. I, yeah. Yeah, it's like you're always going to get the trolls, but the Venmo request for like a hundred bucks, like, you know, wait, one shot, really, you know, stuff like that. I'm like, dang, this is actually really funny. Yeah, it is. But how about PGA guy? Any older golfers that you've met that you were like, uh, oh, not as nice as I potentially thought? Or is there anybody that you met that was like incredibly cool that you couldn't have expected? You know, I so I played I played two rounds with Bubba at – uh wgc and i played a practice round with him in the match play and he is so funny and i mean such a good guy he and teddy are just total goofballs i mean they're they're out there and they're like you know hey let's kind of cut this one you know let's see how much we can cut this you know three iron right here and you know it's like all right teddy up and down for a hot dog and it's just like they're totally you know screwing around but the part that's so fun is like i've met so many guys that are over 40 out here that have given me advice and have been so nice when they didn't have to. And I think that's just part of the kind of fraternity of the tour. Um, I mean, I, I haven't, you know, thankfully no douches, lots of <laughs> really, really cool guys, especially the older ones that have just been, you know, telling me funny stories and especially from, you know, like back in the day. So did you notice on Sunday, you're probably busy, obviously, and we saw you get busy out there attacking pins, and we appreciate it from an entertainment standpoint. But on the grounds, there was a caveman-looking human just roaming around aimlessly. He uh, he lost the group he was with because he tried to go get some sunscreen, and for six hours he wasn't able to use his phone because you're not allowed to have your phone in there. So he was lost just walking around. Did you sense that on the course at all, that there was a potential <laughs> ape on the loose was that was there any any thought like that no i was i was a little busy i was uh trying to make sure that smart. my pants didn't fall down smart. or had my zipper up and all that smart smart <laughs> the did you yeah this guy over here i don't know if you had heard well you've been a little bit busy he went to the masters on sunday he said he followed you around or whatever he was following around people all day because his group just left him and, and i didn't know the masters was a trip back in time so much like he said no phones no oh, nothing yeah. is it just is it much different feeling there than everywhere else it's obvious like it's the super bowl of of golf yeah because you know when you go to tournaments and you hear the guys you know screaming mashed potatoes or get it all you know off of like a 550 yard par five like yeah they're over served you know guys have their phones <laughs> and they're trying to make memories or whatever and like i i think it's hilarious i mean it's just it is what it is but out there you hear way more clapping than you do at every other tournament because people don't have their phones so uh, just the the sounds of hearing more clapping immediately makes everything feel back in time and you know the no phone policy i mean there are a couple guys that i or that try to bring their phones in and they had them confiscated and you know it's just it's just old school but when you're there as a player and not having your phone and just being able to appreciate everything, it's just, it's, there's just nothing like it. Hey, so where do you go from here though? You're obviously in contention, almost win the masters. Does a regular tournament, are you worried it's going to, it's going to be boring for you? Like it's not going to feel like the big stage. Is this the masters or <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it, you know, it's like being a little tired after last week, but Hey, I'm playing with DJ and Billy Horschel this week, Thursday, Friday. Hey, I mean, Billy, Billy you know. made a name for himself. This week. And he, two, yeah, I mean, two shoeless golf moments for old Billy Horschel back to back down there. Yeah. So, I mean, that'll, you know, it's like, you know, get to go play the number one player in the world the week after the masters. And it's like, yeah, you think it'd be a little mentally fried, but hell still, giving out the same check they were all the other weeks and i'm still trying to get my pj tour card and make that fedex cup playoffs so let's go earn it all right well good luck we appreciate you joining us it was a lot of fun to watch you i understand middle of the season very busy time good luck this weekend rest of the season we appreciate the hell out of you will oh thanks brother thanks for having me hey no problem ladies and gentlemen will zalatoris yeah! <laughs> zalatoris big fan
big fan of him. Mm -hmm. I didn't know he got like kind of booted off a tour. He yeah, no did cool. the whole thing, didn't make it. Here we go. It's like a comeback story and a legendary story all at the same time. He's been top 25 every event he's played in this year and he can't get his fucking tour card. Because... I didn't know that, AJ. By the way, great question. Did you learn that at the Masters by listening in to a group of friends that was there together? <laughs> I, I did get a lot of uh, like random facts about Will that other people around me were throwing out. I think maybe... 1% was probably true of the stuff people were coming up with. But oh, my was, God. Masters is the game of telephone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, he, oh. Was, Masters, he, got a, he was tied for six at the U.S. Open, though. Mm -hmm. Like, this dude, is he almost won the U.S. Open, too. He's a player.